We looked at a lot of the big name, well-known pole barn companies online. We found that what they seem to do is pay a local contractor to build with the materials that they ship to your location. We got quotes for a 40 by 60, 2400 square foot building that would have 14 foot tall walls. We had two quotes for $53,000, one for $70,000, and one for $100,000. We even looked at some Amish companies that said they could come and build in a few days. I just didn't know how that would work out with building inspectors and planning inspections around a building that was put up so fast. After all that research, we ended up seeing a nice big garage down the road that was likely for boats or RVs, I'm not sure. I drove up to the house, no one was home, so I left a note with my email saying, hey, I like your building, tell me a little bit more about it. I heard from this person the next day, he gave us the name of the local builder, we contacted that builder and gave him the same dimensions, and he gave me a quote of 59,262. There's a pretty big range between all the different quotes, and although this one was more than the lower ones, I just felt it was going to be better to go with someone who lived in the area, knew the area, and it would have connections with other people uh, that I would potentially be working with. Now each of these companies had slightly different preferred building materials or methods you could see in their quotes. Some built with solid posts, some were glue laminated posts, some used rebar in their cement, others used fiber mesh reinforced concrete. There are a lot of questions that you'll need to be able to answer even for a quote. How big do you want your windows? How many? Do you want something on the roof? How thick do you want the concrete slab? Do you want it extra thick in one area for a car lift? Do you want your gables to overhang? Do you want vented soffits? I asked for a low profile vent on the top center all the way across 60 feet in length since I knew that I was going to be finishing one side of the building into a home which would mean there would be an attic above the living area that would need airflow. The ridge vent lets air escape through a roll of stuff that looks like that grill scrubbing material. So to have airflow over the living space, I wanted the top vent and also vented soffits. The company said they would be able to drill holes in the soffits through the metal in a pattern that would give sufficient airflow for the attic. Something else I was certain I wanted was post protectors because I wanted something that would last much longer than me and I didn't want to have to deal with rot or termites. I asked the builder to use these on every post that was underground. This added $50 per post. Just so you know, the $59,262 quote wasn't the first one that we arrived at with the builder. We had also asked him to run different quotes for different building heights and dimensions. He had said we could save some money if we had one part of the building taller and dropped the other one down like this. This would save in all materials, wood, metal siding, as well as time for the builder. We also talked about different heights and widths of garage doors in the different quotes, but I really wanted to keep a large opening and higher joist height so that I could use a lot of the wall space in the garage. I also knew that I wanted to potentially be able to fit in a tall boat or RV. I additionally thought it would be nice to have a sleeping loft in the house's living room and would need tall ceilings for that, so that's why I stayed with the 14-foot walls. So the final construction contract included a 40-foot wide by 60-foot long by 14-foot tall post frame building, pressure treated 6x6 six six posts, 8 foot on center, concrete footers under poles with post protector sleeves in the ground around the poles, 2x8 bottom skirt board around the building bottom, 2x8 door jams, 2x8 gutter fascia board, 2x8 wainscot board, 2x12 load bearing boards on either side of the posts notched in for support, 2x4 sidewall purling, 2 foot on center, 40 foot in length prefabricated trusses, 2x6 top and bottom, 4 foot on center, 412 pitch, 2x4 two roof sheeting, 2 foot on center, 1 foot boxed overhangs on sidewalls and gables with vented soffits on sidewalls, 29 gauge roofing and siding with 40 year paint warranty fastened with 2 inch wood grip screws. All nails would be galvanized post frame screw nails. The building would be insulated with foil insulation, then two insulated garage doors. 10 foot 2 inches by 10 foot with high lift to match another 12 foot tall middle door. 
three electric garage door openers, two three foot by 70 inch entrance steel doors, solid and insulated, 12 three foot insulated windows, one three by three cupola with weather vane, five inch seamless commercial gutters and downspouts, four inch concrete floor that is 4,000 PSI mix, poured, finished and sealed with a three foot apron in front of the garage doors. I went to Google Earth, marked where I would want the building corners on the map, since we had walked the land and knew where we wanted it, got the coordinates and gave those to the builder on a hand-drawn sheet. You can't just construct a building in the middle of a field. You have to remove the grass, the topsoil, and make sure everything is perfectly level and compact. This is your building pad. At that time, we didn't even have a driveway out to where we wanted the building to be, so I asked the builder if he knew of anyone who could help us with some light earth moving and make the driveway and a building pad. I wanted a 385 foot driveway with a 50 by 70 foot flat pad for the 40 by 60 building so there would be five feet level uh, ground all the way around the building. The builder said he had some equipment he could do that with so I agreed to his price for the driveway and building pad and we'll list that in the video at the point I paid him. Depending on how much earth you are moving, you may need something called a soil erosion study from your county office. The amount of soil I was having moved for the driveway and building pad did not require that. So we agreed on the building plan, but I still needed the soil engineer who could conduct testing to submit to the health department. If the study was approved for the well and septic, I would be able to apply for a building permit. So I asked the builder if he knew of anyone who could do the testing for the soil I also asked if he had a list of electricians and plumbers. 